for those of you who don't know Kevin, um, we'll be talking a little bit in between his readings of poetry and you'll pick up a little sense of uh, who the man is. I'm going to start off with uh, one that's called uh, Genocide is My Man United and it is, uh, it's the title of my forthcoming book. I was asked the other day what sport I followed. Genocide, I replied, because genocide is my Manchester United, it just is. Hey, I love the pinups, I love the stars. Idi Amin, Benjamin Netanyahu, Paul Pot, Saddam Hussein, George Bush, you name them. And what's that geezer from Central Africa? Yeah, him, the French cannibal scandal one. All oh, the boys, always the boys. We do such great extremes and must boys. We don't do women and their difference. We don't do difference. We achieve goals, scores our pitches, teenage catatonia, babies age by disbelief. That's genocide for you. And genocide is my Man United. And you know, that's the story. <laughs> this is called uh, Shelton. And uh, this, this is a poem about that sort of, the almost, sexual satisfaction you get from the bizarre intimacy uh, the bizarre intimacy of talking to people at the edges of natural disasters or, or just a couple of miles away from the front line of, um, of, of, of conflict and uh, okay, shout what's called as I said under spar awning we stood and talked vicious rain. By battenbong paddy we smoked dope and spoke many minds. Behind, behind Bangkok wall we ducked and hoped, zing, bullet oblivious. In ivory coast we smiled, desperate searching smiles. Where are the eyes and more, where are the eyes and more paint faces? And always we sucked in brittle sexual thrill, strangers, combatant or non, smoking, nodding, talking quietly of the very, very many dangers, hell-bent on stopping you, making it safe home. The next one's about the Iraq War, but I'll, uh, I'll buy a drink to anyone who can tell me why it is. Um, it's, uh, it's called Van Gogh is such a sneaky painter, and it's actually it's my favourite out of all the ones I've done so far. And it's, it, it's, uh, it's really about the, the hubris of those neocon scumbags who have destroyed Iraq and deliberately rendered it into a set of uh, warring sectarian factions and created the the kind of the shit that we're seeing at the moment. And sadly, that the people who are getting beheaded are not Rumsfeld or Pearl and Wolfowitz, but one lives in hope. Um, I filled, I kind of filled it that. It's actually, it's based on an encounter I had in a museum in Paris about 30 years ago with a young American. And it was, a, it was the Jus de Bon, and it was, there was only two people there. There was me and him. And, you know, we were looking at, uh, at some Van Gogh paintings, and he and his wisdom uh, had kind of sussed what, uh, what Vincent was about. You know, he was, uh, he'd obviously read a lot of Beano and Dandies, you know, where you, where you see all the little bananas on the tree, or, you know, find six, find six monkeys in the jungle. It was that, that cast of carry on. <laughs> Let me see how I do this one. <coughs> Terrifying. Terrified I stood as the loud young American poked, jabbed his finger at our old tree. See, he said, see, relentless museum, surreal, no guards, no alarms, not yet. But don't mess with the heart in France, so panic, I say, yes, I do, I acknowledge few satisfied he turns with order has been restored certainty but there will be no confusion no ambiguity so still gesticulating a trembling canvas he smugly mouths to kevin shivering in cultural conflict high noon song van gogh is such a sneaky painter Van Gogh is such a sneaky painter, sneaky indeed, yank in jus de pomme, no one's fool. 
order under attack. So many decadent tropes, goddamn that Dutch jihadi, the duplicity of this old Europe. Give me Iwo Jimo for art. The new American century will not be subverted by tricks, by spot thin faces in the arm of trees. Sneaky, 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 very Victor Charlie. Poor Van Gogh. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Very surrender monkey. Poor Van Gogh. Poor, poor Vincent. Poor Van Gogh. Hey, that's some of the heavy stuff, I promise. <laughs> We have, some we have some minor things coming, but I, sh I should alert you that it does finish on illness and death. <laughs> no, it does but, uh, but apparently, that's, uh, that's, how it, that's how it goes. Yeah, that's how it um, goes. Yeah. But um, I think we said we, might, love, are we? we said we might talk about love now, yeah? This is one I wrote about 30 years ago, and I was obviously chuffed with myself and decided to congratulate myself and have a drink or something in a few decades slip by, as they do. Uh, it was written about someone who's in the room. It's called Clam. Uh, I fell in love with a cat. Nobody told me she was a clam. She was Tom and Jerry all in one. But nobody told me she was a clam. She didn't slink away in a backyard and brace down amongst the trash bags. No clawed polythene, no cracked eggshells, no pierced tea bags. No, no. She just closed down. Um, we're shifting topic, I think. Or, uh, we're rounding back to, uh, to Ireland now, I think, aren't we? Yeah, um, yeah. And in a way, that's sort of, well, that also gets you started with some, what got you writing poetry again. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get on to that in a second or two because it's just going to make my family sweat when I talk about <laughs> subjects. You know? yeah. So, um, <laughs> so we, should we just use a cone? Are we call him something else or something? Does that work for the legal advisors? If we just, no! If we call him Jimmy, that, no? Someone asked me to write a poem or something, you know, poetry quarterly type thing. And this was when the, you know, the country was going down the tubes and I was kind of going like, Jesus, man. Like, this stuff was just totally inadequate to deal with what, what has to be dealt with. Anyhow, it's called The Reservation. Poetry don't need no reservation, rich seam of adjectives, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we all know where the buffalo roam and it ain't in no reservation. Needs to find oh so gentile when so much depends upon the cavalry call. The bugle that tells you it's time to go Apache on the gig. Burn down Tom's cabin, throw away the trinkets. We're looking for scouts, black man, white man, yellow man, red man. Someone who's got to pay. And this one's called uh, Daddy's Cooking Crystal Meth in the Barna Shed. <laughs> Sadly, it's a uh, part of it. It's kind of a basic <laughs> true story. I don't, think that, I don't think the daddy in question is in the audience. He's not, no. He's not a married. Uh, he's probably busy cooking crystal meth in the Barna Shed. And Daddy is a reporter with the National Daily. Did Daddy help expose the bankers that buried us? Oh no, no he didn't, because Daddy's cooking crystal meth in the Barna Shed. Daddy is an advertising copywriter. Did Daddy write the scam they call the gathering? Oh no, no he didn't, because Daddy's cooking crystal meth in the Barna Shed. Daddy is an unemployed poet. Did Daddy write the wrongs that ail us? Oh, no, no, he didn't, because Daddy's cooking crystal meth in the barn shed. Daddy is a house husband. Did Daddy get kicked out of home? Oh, yes, yes, he did, because Daddy's cooking crystal meth in the barn shed. Enough now out of me, I got to go cook crystal meth in the barn shed. For my dear parents, I know my mother's just a put of Christmas nets for about fetching me. Just so you can be accurate with your frown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what 
we do the next? Yeah. Not yet. No, no, no. Uh, this one is um, this one's called Sovereign once again, and uh, I wrote it. Um, I wrote it when I was up in Anamikarig, up there in kind of the border of Badlands, and I suppose it's kind of the sort of nearest thing I've done to sort of a, a Nick Cave murder ballad. Um, <laughs> The Irish Times on November the 15th just told me over an animacaric tea that we'll be sovereign again. Sovereign again. So I took to my bike without precaution or credit and I took to the hills where houses were boarded, dogs barking and pubs were all closed. Village after village, pubs were all closed. And finally in Cootle, in the county of Cavan, I sat for a pint where Charlie the taxi man leaned forward and said, a fierce amount had taken to the rope, taken to the rope, taken the rope dangling from troika trees and yet others have gone to the bottom of many the lake many the lake many the lake so i swallowed my pint i got back on my bike i looked up the trees i stared down the lakes and i cried out at the top of my voice time after time after time again for god's sake come back Please, Lord, just come back. Do you all not know we'll be sovereign again? Sovereign again. Get the fuck up and out of those graves. We'll be sovereign once again. Woo! <laughs> okay, um, yeah, the, um, the next one's about Declan. It's called the Top Volcano Tea. As a Brecht spectacle, narrative frontier splendor, West gone wild, neocon hubris, disaster, capitalism, dandy up the top full primate brute, jackboot, tea, one dollar a box, ten cent cheaper than London town. You hear London town, and they look on us as savages, old Europe soiled in socialism, foul, foul, foul. Those Jews are biologically different, and let's sterilize the Roma. But hark, tea is served. Tea, tea, do I hear tea? Where's my bun? Lovely ass, I'll sue it. Oh, tales of tea, we made it safely to Henry Jackson. How the cops clinked in Boston, eastern seaboard Brahmins. What the fuck are they? Sounds immigrant to me. Sea, salt, fresh air, captain on deck, males in womb. Twenty men overboard, ten down with scurvy, five shot for sedition. God damn that threat of sedition. God, Allah, whatever. Oh, so liberal, libertarian, libertas. But they made it hell, hell and helmet. You know what they say, you can rent an Afghan, but you can't buy one. But even towheads need to talk. Don't they buff? The money is zipping through the air. Zipping, zip, 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 zing. No need for Kevlar bullets are so last century. The future's communication. They bring wealth, 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 and they bring freedom too. Wedgy wealth, dodgy freedom, and always, 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 always the bloody threat of sedition. Five shot for sedition, or was it six? Don't they understand the need for cheap tea? Those goddamn seditioners! You really need to watch out for them. You really need to watch out for them. Cheers. And then the next one is, uh, this was kind of my response when they were, they were calling me a cyber bully, you know, um, yeah, Brito O'Brien, you know, shameless old Harold and Hassan and a gentleman like Panty, you know, calling me a bully. It's funny those people, you know, the thing I always have to, what you should really do anytime you see those IO creeps on TV, is just turn down the volume, don't listen to a word they say. And just look at them and look at the people they're talking to and think if you're in town and you have an eight-year-old kid with you stuff to your mind and, and you get knocked down by a bus and you have to entrust the child to someone to take them home to the house 
And just look at their faces and ask yourself, who would you give the kid to? You know, would you give it to Patricia Casey from the Iona Institute? Or would you give it to Panty? You know, and Panty would be there saying he's HIV positive, but you give the bloody child to him. You wouldn't give it to those sinister creeps. Anyhow, so I... They were hassling me. Huh? It is a good text, isn't it, Jenna? Um, they are calling me a, a bully, as I say. So I was a tired dealer at the time, and I was going, how do you respond to this sort of shit? And uh, I had to be careful, because my family were getting really annoyed with me about having to bail me out of serious legal trouble, and um, probably rightfully so. And uh, they, they, they didn't want to do it again. <laughs> so... Um, <coughs> I was, uh, I was a bit mad at the time, because uh, uh, I was on this medicine that had a, you know, a kind of a nasty psychiatric dimension to it, and it made you very, very depressed. And I was uh, doing buckets of, kind of medical marijuana to try and get a bit of religion in my life and to keep me eating. <laughs> so I, went, I cycled around on my bicycle, thinking about this uh, for a week. And I, I knew what I needed to do. I needed to come back with a mixture of, with love, you know, if you respond with love, and they're calling you a bully, it kind of fucks with the script a bit. Love and defiance. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I thought about this, and then I, I, I sat down, and uh, this all came out in one go. Bar, bar, I think I changed two words, and at the risk of sounding like a serious loon, I kind of knew it was good, because I could sort of hear music in my head when I was writing it. And, uh, you yeah, know, I changed... I changed loud revolution to bold revolution. I changed one other word, I can't remember what it was. But it, um, yeah, it came out like that. And then, it, you know, it got, I was pleased to, to see it, uh, it, um, it got picked up by various sites around the world. And in particular, the, the, the Rachel Maddow show in the States kind of uh, ran it. And it was kind of pleasant. I was going to bed and I saw on YouTube it had 500 hits. And then I went in to brush my teeth. And when I came back, it had 3,000. I was like, what God's name has gone on here? And then I sussed, uh, sussed what had happened. So, uh, yeah, it kind of, it had, so I, I was very grateful to, um, to Declan and Rita. I, I dropped them little, little notes, little emails, thanking them. Because um, I'd be like, well, this is, this is all down to them, basically. And this is, this is, this is the title of my e-book, copies of which have been sold by a very beautiful lady who's uh, down the back there with her hands in the air, so you can approach her at the back. Uh, you, can, you can download them yourself for a fiver, but I've saved you the trouble. You can buy them for a tenner, but you get them on a... You get them on an 8 gigabyte USB key that would normally, normally cost you 8 quid, so you only get them for 2 quid. I never make a business now. <laughs> I put I hang with some slightly more kind of good or some friends. Um, yeah, this is a this is called Dialogue of the Internet. Opium to De Quincey, Sin to Milton, Congo to Conrad, Aaron to Sin, I love the internet. Castles to Shakespeare, to Seat to Lake Dublin to Joyce, Marketplace to Chaucer, and did we say daffodils to Wordsworth? Because we couldn't forget that. Our mounted jihad to Tennyson, or the weird, wild wonder of the whole goddamn show to Dylan. I love the internet, wild, lewd, bawdy, bullion, smelling like cats, cranks, crank, meth, conspiracy, snipers, and all. Fascists make cartoon and write digital soil, erudite walls in what trite and eternal ballroom, dedicated skiers on seas of trivial loom, self help, soma, screen and thinning, TV, hair repair, and always the smiles of the Filipino brides, and the promises of untold Nigerian riches, flashing, wheels spinning, ace, poker, squared, you have been chosen. Somewhere down there, in the fly fishing section, the first faint whispers in the ears are right of hushed talk of bold revolution. I love the internet, the sheer, dull, scintillating, infantile anarchy of it all. Boisterous, brugal, medieval market, futuristic middle ages directed by Friar Tuck, and offset whispers of Robin lurking in wood. I love the internet because it is ours. Cheers.
here tonight, I think for those of us who know and uh, love Kevin, is, is something of a celebration because many of us were here a year ago and um, and Kevin was proper bloody ill. And, uh, did a good show, read the poems well, but um, wasn't a well man and have gone through some very serious treatment. And I am grateful to be able to report, came out the other side of it and is the uh, rude and fizzy, uh, <laughs> healthy entity you can see beside me here. So uh, the poems about illness um, have more historical resonance than uh, current resonance, I'm delighted to say. So am I. Sorry, I'm getting hot here. Um, this first one is called Interference. <clears throat> Diary of an illness so desperately needed. My battle with fear, cancer, baldness, bad breath, death, whatever you're having yourself. Oh, so brave and not even a breast to lose. But let's face up, this one's not for you. This is for me. <clears throat> Chucking words of fear. <laughs> Cause nothing is remembered the last time round. Unsuccessful, blank, dumb, mute, just visceral electric howl. DNA, Dylan, a tonal protest, ghostly imprint, and now the comeback tour. So here we go, we're here to go. Whistling in the wind, spitting in the gale. Dan Dark, Boreens with desperate deal with. Come as a thought to, come as a thought to. Not very well since you asked, been a lot better. But there you are, a lesson in whatever, interfering, interfering. Here we go, we're here to go. Come to talk to I, uh, I was asked, uh, someone was uh, doing a, a Jack Kerouac um, festival in Spain. And surprise, surprise. Uh, they asked me would I do something for it, and um, this this doesn't really have a huge amount to do with Jack Kerouac. I mean, like everything else in life, being a narcissist, it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, once again, it's kind of it's kind of filtered. It's kind of filtered through through Kerouac. Uh, yeah, it's called The End of the Road with Jack Kerouac. Clackety clack, Jack, don't look back. Those dreams of Denver are getting fierce dim. Ah, man, it's time, 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 time. You know we both got to blow, 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 blow. No, no, no. Yes, I'm afraid, scared, terrified, petrified. God damn it, man, we're in the end. Coast to coast. Gasoline defiance, jazz fumed with the radio on. In love with the modern world, always with the radio on. Beaming 2014, George chewing, yap, yap, yapping, non stop neon. Can't catch us, can't catch us. We're on the road, we're on the road, the wide open road, hurtling towards the inevitable end. Ah, but we outran them all, didn't we, Jack? Sharing their murderous Korean piety and reefer breaks we'll exhaust. The dreams we dreamed we lit a light, dash dial guzzling by bright hepcat night. Zoom, zoom, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nina, Nina, oh shit. Feds on our tail, time to bail. The boat to Tangier, the first whip of fear. So fare well, Jack, fare well, Kerouac. We've both just run right out of, right out of, right out of, right out of, right out of road. This one, this one is, uh, is not really apt on a day like today, but uh, I was written during that uh, that bout of snow we got in kind of, was it April last year? And it was just, it was the last thing I needed. And it's called, What Chance in a Sign in the Spring? The wind is blowing from the east and it's fierce cold. She said with a determined, death-defined determination to the equally defiant grey nail beside, flashing silver-educated lucky in their decent, terrier stride. And good on them. 
but no one fed me my defiance today. And listen here, I got the salts and itch and shivers. I got the Stalin dread. I got the dusty esky horrors, man. I got goggles in my head. It's so bloody Siberian, God damn it! It's so arctic around here. I could really do it some sunshine instead of this blood-soaked below zero Ukrainian nationalistic affair, sweet. Mother of Jesus, sweet mother of Jesus, I'm the last of talk of the weather. But what chance of a sign of the spring? What chance of a sign of the spring? <laughs> the movie has been made of this next one by Connor Horgan, who's here, uh, which is a, it's a marvellous little movie. Uh, as one of his friends aptly described it, it's odd as a bag of cats. And, uh, but when I was uh, staying in my sister Eileen's house uh, for the year of the medical treatment I was doing, there was one of these electricity boxes outside the door. And like every week it seems to me, there'd be a new sign up for like a lost cat. And me and my madness thought it was some artist playing the game. I just, I just wasn't used to affluent suburbia and what goes down. And, uh, I spotted a girl I knew once, you know, who was quite a beauty. I was looking for her lost cat, and there was just something about what she was up to that just... It was, it was a big disconnect, anyhow, for the beautiful girl. Anyhow, here we go. Those women searching for cats, they terrify me. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. I wish all the women in their forties would just find their lost cats, please. I wish they take down all those signs, please. Lost kitty cat, lost scaredy cat, seriously cats, just go home. Cause your owners really scare me, and the ghosts of long gone young girls, they laugh at me, grey they call me, and I hear them snigger as I try to scale a wall. Stop it, stop it, stop it, unleash the dogs, send the cats home, bring back the girls, I prefer the girls, I really did, I really prefer them to the worried look of women women alone in their forties searching for lost cats. Don't they know how much it scares me? The worried look of women alone in their forties searching for lost cats. Meow. 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 <laughs> decided yet. The print book will come with uh, with a code for like a download that will bring you to a website where you get the whole thing in audio and as many movies of the poems as I can hustle talented directors to make. So uh, that will be Genocide is my man United and hopefully it will be out by the end of the summer. And uh, yeah, this is called Words by Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> Woke up this morning, and there they were, words, wiggly, weasley, wondrous words, all with loads to say, never a dull moment with words, never stuck for a curse with words, never short of a laugh with words, fall in love with words, let the hate roll with words. 
whisper sweet nothing with words when the show gets really 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 fucking desperate pray with words apologize for all you have done wrong with words forgive me forgive me forgive me forgive me with words but we won't forgive her with words we'll tell that dead baroness all she did wrong with words she'll get no 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 eulogy out of me with words instead i'll go write a song with words Words. I'll trap the dirt down just like Elvis said with words. I'll tell fawning funeral generals they are just puffed up poppycocks with words. I'll reopen the pits with words. I'll give everyone their job back with words. I refuse to partake in her doggy dog world with words. Darwinian silverback penny pinch primate, that woman's a nape. May she be for hunting by hoodoo into her hallway. And I mean it, I mean it with words, glorious words. Societies, yeah, I say it again. Societies, affable handymen, words, and all oh, that you are dead to. Maggie, words. Thanks very much, folks. Thank you.